Hello and welcome to Profit Insights. My guest today is Mr. Gautam Sanghania, Chairman of Raymond Group. And we're going to discuss the transformation that's happening in the entire group there, Mr. Sanghania. Thank you very much for joining us on NDTV Profit. Uh, you know, it's been a very good year for you, FI24, uh, in terms of profitability, in terms of revenue. And there's a transformation also which is happening with respect to you know, unlocking shareholder value. Take us through what you plan to achieve in that transformation. So, you know, when COVID hit uh, us, uh, obviously the company was in a lot of trouble. We had multiple issues and then we put our head down. So we started to cut costs uh, and we went on the transformation journey of rebuilding the team, rebuilding the businesses. And before, obviously, the, one of the two issues that were there, there was no profitability and two, the debt was very high. So we focused on cost, brought the cost down and then started, you know, profitability of each business, built a new management team. And we had committed to the markets that would be debt free by 2025, uh, which we were able to achieve in 2023 because of uh, the sale of the FMCG business, yeah. which we committed that we would do. We built a strong um, real estate business in the last five years. We did the acquisition of many engineering in the last five years. And slowly, slowly, we started turning things around. The proceeds that I got personally from the sale of the FMCG business, because I held 40, 50% of that, I put back into the lifestyle company. Uh, then obviously embarking on the journey of shareholder value creation, we announced the demerger of the lifestyle business, uh, which will get over uh, all the permissions are in place now. Um, the record date was 11th of July, where Raymond went X lifestyle and we'll have the listing of the lifestyle business next week. Uh, subsequent to that, uh, we also announced the demerger of the real estate business. Now, the, the advantage is that you'll have three, by next year, you'll have three separate companies. Yes, two this year. Yeah. And each company will have its own governance, own boards, own structures, own strategies, own people, uh, incentivize people. So I think this is very uh, good from a shareholder value creation point of view. I also think it's very good from a long term point of view because, you know, investors gave us a massive hold company, hold co discount. I would say maybe a 75, 80% whole core discount. And, uh, you know, people who invest in consumer companies don't want to invest in real estate That's companies true. or engineering yeah. companies. Yeah. So now we get, you know, a cap table that will be suitable for that business. So in the lifestyle business, we'll definitely get investors who like to invest in the consumer space. Next year, you'll get a different set of investors who like to invest in the real estate space. And engineering, of course, will be a separate set of investors. So I think from looking at all points of view, looking at everything in mind, I think it's the right decision. Um, you know, let's talk about the lifestyle business because it's getting listed next week. Uh, you know, it's it's been a good year for that business as well in terms of top line. Uh, uh, how do you plan to expand that business and which are the new segments that you want to go get into? So if you break that business up into two kinds of business, one is the legacy business, which is the fabric business. Uh, which is a larger base. Yeah. So you, you work on that. And then you've got all the other new verticals that we have started. Raymond was fundamentally known for fabrics. That's right. Then we have, say, for example, we have shirting fabrics, which we started about five, six years ago. Today, we have almost 30 million meters of shirting fabric yeah. over the counter. Yeah. Uh, so not made as shirts, but, but being sold as, as fabric. Uh, we've got made to measure. Uh, we've got uh, home furnishings. We've got ethnic wear, which is we talk about. And and like this, we just launched sleepwear, inner wear. So the new categories will grow at a much faster pace. And uh, that's where the exponential growth will come from. So idea is to grow the top line at 15%, EBITDA at about 20% hmm. year on year. And my, uh, you know, if EBITDA is going to grow at 20%, you know, it will take care of its own growth path because the cash flows would be stronger for, in that sense. Uh, Within uh, the April segment, because that's where a lot of value share is now getting created for many of the players there. Uh, do you plan to, you know, go into the luxury mode or, or you know, you want to come uh, come little down or lower See, to the... Raymond is the only company in the world that sells from 300 rupees a meter to 10 lakh rupees a meter under the same brand. Yeah. We go 3,000 times and twice points. So I think we give the customer everything. We got four brands, Raymond, Park Avenue, Parks, Color Plus, now Ethnics, Sleeps. So we've also got into sleep now. Yeah. We're also getting into Innovena. now. So I think we give value uh, across what we do. And the different 
brands move in different price segments. Color Plus has its own niche, Plus. Chevy has got its own niche, Parks has its own niche. So, uh, even Raymond Premium Apparel exactly, is growing. Exactly, yeah. So, so, that's a completely different niche. Uh, ethnics is something which uh, you know you've been growing at I think 114 stores if yeah. I'm not wrong uh, in at the end of FY24 and you plan to get another 100 or something uh, going so over the next year, wave. This year across the company, across the TRS and the EBOs including ethnics we should do about 300 new stores and over the next three years 800 to 900 stores uh, is something we should grow at. Uh, if you look just this year I think in ethnics alone uh, in ethnics alone, we should do another 100 stores. So there's a lot of growth opportunity for us. And uh, I don't think many companies in the apparel or textile space that will open 8, 900 stores over the next three years. True. So we're very bullish in the space. We have a lot of growth opportunities, and that's what we're focusing on. Uh, are you also looking at uh, going uh, overseas uh, in that sense? or so is Middle it East? Middle East is a market we're focusing on. Uh, the whole GCC, Saudi, that whole area because I think that's a very big opportunity uh, for the future. Uh, what about uh, the innerwear and the sleepwear market? Because that's literally new for you and it's uh, very competitive as well in that sense. So innerwear is more competitive. So we have a different strategy for innerwear. Sleepwear, we are the first mover advantage in the sleepwear. Um, we have come out with the product range, which is we went from concept to execution in four months. And uh, I think the initial response in the market has been good. So the products have just gone into the market. We've had a fairly decent response. I, I don't see any reason why it cannot be scalable. And uh, how do you plan to scale it up? Uh, with what uh, percentage of your sales uh, would eventually come from, you know, wear and sleepwear going uh, forward? Right now, it'll be very small. small. But as it scales up, because the, the you know, 3, 4% or 5, 7, oh, sorry, 7, 8% on the fabric business hmm. is still a much, much larger number than a sleepwear can do at 50%. Okay. So... It will slowly, so like I said, we, we are planning these verticals. So, like the like the shirting vertical, today yes. is a 30 million meter fabric business. Yeah. Now, that might grow 100% in three years, whereas your sleepwear may grow 500% in three years because it's a smaller base. How do you see the revenue profile of lifestyle growing uh, from what what it is today, maybe, maybe five years down the line? What kind of revenue are you looking from? I I said, if you're looking at a revenue growth of about 15% a year, so, so we should double revenue. Double revenue, yeah. five to uh, five, years. five years, basically. Uh, your bigger bet now is on real estate because that's uh, what you're looking at. Uh, the the demerger, uh, you know, process is underway. Uh, I think you've already applied it to, to the stock exchanges, if I'm not wrong. Uh, how do you see the uh, real estate business? Uh, because land bank is one thing, and uh, you know, capital requirement is another thing, which which comes into play. So you see, we started. You're right. We started with our historical land bank, and Having said that, we've now done four JDS outside. Um, we're not getting into investing in land. We are coming in and only doing JDS. So the capital requirement per se is not there. Okay. So the working capital requirement and peak working capital is not that much in any project because we, we build fast, we sell fast, we collect fast. So we manage the working capital very well. And we built a significant brand today in the real estate space. Today, we're the, we're the only company that's now delivering two and a half years ahead of radar turn okay. We're building scale. We're building quality. Traction of sales. We are number one in Thana. We are num number one sales in Bandra as per the last report. So I think there's a lot going for our real estate business. And I think in the real estate business, people look to do who meets the talk. Hmm. You know, who meets, who walks the talk and who, who delivers on time because buying a home is a very emotional decision. And, and uh, you know, you want your home on time. So if you can do that at a good quality, uh, you become the preferred developer. Uh, you know, if I'm not wrong, uh, estimated uh, revenue from uh, what you're already constructing is around 9,000 crores and another 16,000 crores from uh, future project projects. That's what you've been looking for. So I would say the Thana project total developable area should be about 11 million square feet. And if you take that at even 25,000 rupees square feet or 27,000 average over a period of... So it's a 25, 30,000 crore project. And that would be spread over how, how long? Uh, I would say uh, right now we've got about 4 million under development, maybe another 5, 6 years. Then uh, you've got outside projects uh, yes, which are coming in. Yeah. And I see the, on a macro level, I just look at Bombay. If you see every society, probably the society you live in as well, is all coming under development. The, the rules in the state are very conducive yes. to a developing uh, societies. 
There's something in it for the society, there's something in it for the developer, and there's something in it for the state. So that combination is good. And if I look outside my window in Bombay, you know, the, the, the amount of opportunity that is there is huge. And every other building is going for it. Yeah. So, um, being uh, a big player in the real estate market, uh, how do you see the you know supply coming in? Because at some point in time, the supply is going to hit the prices, right? I mean, so even if you are doing a real development, uh, you have to give flats to the existing, uh, so my view and then uh, over and over that construct for the uh, for the for the other customers, right? So, I certainly maybe mine is a contrarian view, but I do, I see South Bombay primarily because of the amazing infrastructure that is coming up. Because you today, if, say for example, Beach Candy is on like fifty thousand rupees, and our Bandra project is thirty five thousand rupees, and by the ceiling. Coastal road, you're there in 10 minutes. Mm. Ten, so, at some place, water will find its own level. So, a lot of people are still very bullish that South Bombay will become one and a half, two lakh rupees square foot. I'm a little skeptical on that. So, there's just, I mean, the two different views. Nobody knows where you the think price the prices is. will fall in South I, Bombay? I believe they will fall. That's my view. But that's purely my view. Um, you know, there are people who say it will go up. So, it's really, you've got to take a view and then do business by what view you take. Uh, but I don't, I don't think you, you, neither you or me have a crystal ball. We can only have a view. And by how much prices could fall in South Mumbai? It's very difficult to tell. But estimated because I the new projections? Really, it really depends on the speed, at, uh, the supply that comes into the market. Because, see, like you rightly said, redevelopment is happening. And every redevelopment project will give a lot of FSI space to the builder to put into the market, yes. which will help pay for the redevelopment of the tenants. That's right. So effectively, how much supply comes in is difficult to tell. But my view is based on two things. One is supply coming in and two, infrastructure. If infra comes and I'm able to go from north to south at a faster space, yes. then I might go to a slightly cheaper market and come into South Bombay as in then I need. The, just like the coastal road is making so it happen. Coastal road has been a game changer for yes. Mumbai. Yeah. And then when you have the Valley Interconnect to yes. the Sands Harbour and yeah. all the other projects that are coming in, Bombay will be a very different city. Yeah. Uh, what's your view on the premium housing, right? But you are uh, part of it, but do you think that you know there's we enough demand? Do you do affordable, affordable luxury. luxury and uh, and you don't look at premium at all? We are not doing premium. And do you see enough uh, demand for uh, the affordable luxury which is there? Absolutely. I think, you know, see, what we do is we give a great home, we give, give great facilities. So we up your life, we up your lifestyle. And we build fast, we give it fast, we give quality. And there's a big demand for that. Um, my next one is on your third business, which is the engineering business. And you are bifurcating that into two halves. One is a defense and aerospace and the other consumer uh, engineering, which is there. Uh, it's interesting. You acquired many uh, precision uh, uh, engineering and uh, and entered into defense. So, what's your view on the defense sector as a whole, and what kind of opportunity are you looking at? Which space you're looking at? It's a, very, Aero, a huge space. It was a huge space to look at, and you know, with uh, all the work Modi ji has done, and you know, making India, etc. So, there is a demand for making for aero. Uh, Internationally, aero is, you know, very complex. So, you know, many was a, is a very good precision engineering. Yeah. So, aero is on one side of the spectrum. On the other side, we've got the engineering files. And in the middle, we've got the auto components. Again, the auto component, I had a contrarian view on EV. I, I didn't believe in EV as much as other people. Even now? Even now, I don't. I think EVs have survived. I'm maybe not politically correct statement, but I think it survived a lot because of subsidies, etc. But if you see even companies like Tesla and the stocks of the cars that are being built up, uh, I think hybrid will work. I think hybrid is better. It's much better, you know, hmm. much better acceptability. But the IC engine and the ecosystem is very large. Today, you make more than 100 million IC engines. Hmm. And even if that grows at 3, 4, 5%, you're still going to make 3, 4, 5 million more ICs. Yeah, it is. And I think the total global production of EVs is three, four, five. Years. But yet you're uh, betting on EV as well in your business, right? Yes, we are betting. Some amount you're betting because you can't lose that market because if it does come, yes, you don't want to lose that market. But I think I see we've got a good space, you know, and in our India, as they're saying, we're almost 10% global market share, uh, which is a good space to be. Um, 
my final question to you is again back to the defense thing because you uh, acquired many and you had uh, taken a majority stake there. Are you going to take it to 100% at some point in time? No, we are partners in that business. It's not only that we bought the business, we also bought management. Uh, we also have made Mr. Maney the managing director of the company. He brings in a lot of passion and uh, drive into the knowledge into that business. So I think it's a great partnership where, you know, we bring in a different skill set to that business. He brings in a very different skill set. He's a first generation entrepreneur. So I don't think you want to change that for the moment. Are you looking at moving from being manufacturing of subsystems to system integrator at some point in time as far as it opens up and so uh, you're always know, looking at opportunities. Yeah. So it's difficult to get into specifics of each, but yeah, we're always looking at opportunities. My final question to you, sir. Uh, three businesses will be listed by the end of this financial year. Next hopefully, year. hopefully uh, within a year. Within a year. Uh, what is the you know, value unlocking that you see from the current value to maybe at the end of? I'm asking you to crystal gaze, but uh, it's very difficult to say. So let's let's leave real estate and engineering out for a minute, and let's focus on what we are here for this this week. If you actually take the different verticals of our business and compare them with the comparables which are listed companies yeah. in the market, yeah. you will get a good idea of what we're talking. About. So, for example, if you take the ethnic wedding wear space, there's a listed company in the ethnic wedding wear space. We all know their sales are 1,300 crores. Our sales are 37, 38 crores with the same ROC. Numbers. Yeah. You can benchmark. You take our garmenting business, you benchmark it against the number one, two, three garment. You take our apparel business, you benchmark it. You take our shirting business, you benchmark it. You'll get a number. And... Um the new business is the innerware and so you uh, have a portion of value yeah, for that is yeah. so today you are actually getting all the competitors tied up into one company that we are going to list number two we put in uh, in place world class governance we've got seven extremely good independent directors uh, from I can give you all the names if you want but seven professional independent directors will join the board so there are enough management bandwidth to take the businesses yes. forward. And you know, with the, you know, people say, we somebody who was talking to this today says he says you have created a lighthouse board, you know, from Mr. Yeah. Ravi Dari yeah. to Rajiv Sharma, yeah. global CEO of Ports. We are yeah. trying to ask to Mr. Chaturvedi, who was ex ICICI chairman, to Vineet Nair from yeah. HCR, HCR. To, uh, to Dinesh Lal, who's who's ex mesh chairman. So, Mr. Rasimul Muthi, uh, they happened. Mm -hmm. So, we've built up a good quality board, and I think that will really guide this company into the future from a strategy point of view and from a government. And your focus will be now on real estate and engineering? My focus is stated from day one as only one trading share of the value. And I will focus where I need to. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.